So I should exclaim hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hi, we've all been just chit-chatting for so long, and welcome to this installment of Poetic License. I heard you guys. Um, I was just explaining that I was trying to put cut on green things because it's supposed to be St. Patrick's Day month, although I don't think I put on red things for Valentine's Day last month, so I don't know what the difference makes. And if Tom were on, I'll have to bring up references to having beads and hats and stuff, because we would usually do that as his open mics. But I hope everyone is doing well. I probably should also say another little aside, and this is something that you guys can listen in on too. Um, I am making it to every open mic. I'm often in another part of the country or something. Well, I've just found out that they won in July, July 2nd. I just found out that my family is having a 100-year family reunion because my grandfather came to Ellis Island on July 1st of 1923. And so 100 people or something and some people from the Netherlands are actually going to be coming here for this re So I'm like, I've got to go for this one day. And then I find out on the next day, I'm going to have a poetry feature in Chicago. There's a good chance that it is at the same time as this open mic. <laughs> if it is, I cannot pull off having the open mic on the first Sunday of the month. I have to confirm with Kathleen, who runs the poetry open mic in Chicago, the one day I'm there, um, if that if, if it is in conflict, otherwise I'll be somewhere in Chicago doing the open mic some more. Well, if if I don't have the open mic going on at the time, I can. So I have to confirm the time for my open mic in Chicago. Then. Well, I mean, why can't you do both together? Um, well, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys, and I'd have to probably swap out a hi-fi thing from the laptop and the things. It might be a little bit. It's it's on the beach. So it might be a little bit harder to pull off, uh, technically speaking. Um, and I'd be, it'd be another open mic at the same time, so I couldn't have this open mic going on at the same time as the other open mic. But if there was some sort of insane problem, and by the way, I should say hi to the people in the live ch uh, feeds that are watching. But um, if there is a problem and I cannot make it, I was thinking of asking if John wanted to run it, but I was also suggesting that if he wanted to, we could do it on the second Sunday for the one month. You know, I mean, possibly. You know, I mean, so it's something I think of, and I still have to talk to the the person that I'm doing the feature for in July to find out what's up with that. So anyway, so there's my technical stuff. Hi there again. This is a, a weird installment of Poetic License, and since Tom has shown up, I didn't know how to dress up for St. Patrick's Day. I often would do that at the beginning of the month for yours, and I even have a container of lots of green beads. Reserve. Yeah, he's laughing. And even a hat. I don't know who gave me this hat. But, you know, I don't think it'll fit in with the Zoom meeting for you guys, but, but the festive spirit is there, which was actually started in America anyway. So, so don't worry about it. Hi there. Um, I'm going to start with reading some poetry, and then we're going to do round robin poetry. Um, if anybody's watching this live stream, if they're interested in going it, you can go to the Poetic License event listing, and there is a link to go to the Zoom meeting. So... If you are interested in coming and visit for realsies and see all these other people here, you're very welcome to come by. Anyway, in the meantime, I start by reading three poems for the intro round before I pass along, of course, to Zoom host John. And then I've got on the list Brian Generalissimo himself, uh, Richard Kent, yay, hi Richard, and Tom Woodruff are on the list right now. Hello. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start with a reading as I always do in my first reading. I read from the most recent issue of CCND Magazine. And it is titled, based on an accepted piece of writing, Not There Anymore. Not There Anymore. So I'm like, well, I've got some columns. I guess that building's not there anymore. That'll work for a title, I guess. I don't know. But I thought I'd pick for you three different poems in this for you. Um, the first one, it's a shame that Susan isn't here, um, is going to be one that is also going to be in the 2023 Cyber Wit book titled Testament. I just confirmed, they just sent me the re a manuscript to review, and it had no fonts in the manuscript. I'm like, what just happened? So <laughs> this seems to be like a mess up with it, but we've just got the cover approved, so this is the best I can do uh, for showing off a cover for Testament. Um, that's the customs building in New Orleans, I believe, by the way, but no matter. Um, this first poem is in this book as well, and it is in the Me Too section here, and it is called Just Checking My Religions. After the overturning of Roe v. Wade, I believe over half of these United States had trigger laws that would instantly restrict abortion or make them illegal. 
these Christian conservatives think they're helping an unborn child when their own Bible doesn't even agree with them and they only restrict women instead. But Christians, if you're all so gung-ho on imposing your religion as law, tell me why a fetus in the U.S. government doesn't get a social security number or why no priest can bless a stillborn or miscarriage because it was never considered alive. What does that say for protecting the non-living thing over an adult female? Uh, speaking of religion as law, which I think is something the United States wants to shy away from, what of the Jewish people who don't believe life begins at conception, or that a fetus is a full person deserving equal rights to human beings? Jewish law gives a fetus the full status of a human at birth, and the Talmud indicates that until 40 days of gestation, the fetus is mere water. Ancient rabbis considered a fetus as a part of the mother, and it was fully dependent on the mother, and she had full rights to do whatever she wanted with her body. So, if the new conservative Christians impose these restrictive laws, they constitutionally break the First Amendment and deny freedom of religion for some? I don't think you conservative Christians are still holding a grudge on this killing Jesus thing, but trying to make your religion, but trying to make your religion law is actually illegal and in the Constitution. So, really, at this point, what laws do you hope to break till your unfounded religious tenets are law restricting all womankind? I'm done venting. <laughs> I thank you. There's, those are going to be in section one of the book uh, testament when it is out. But I have just a few, of, and I just found my arsenic poem in here as well. Because sometimes people will send me short stories titled element poems or element names, and since I have written poems for every element in the periodic table, the second one I'm going to read for you is actually arsenic, which not only appears in the CCND book that was just released, not there anymore. Anybody who is interested in submitting could always submit to CCND96 at scars.tv. Oh, it is also in the periodic table poetry book, <laughs> which is huge, and it was done back before they all had names. So if you want to know, you know, Nairomium, it's actually Unan Septium in this book, because <laughs> it was older before these ones were actually done. But this is a poem in here that is titled Arsenic. Poisonous ar arsenic is used in paints, dyes, metals, drugs, soaps, even animal feeding operations. We seem to hunt down ways to kill ourselves, don't we? Dukes to kings were poisoned with arsenic. Impressionistic painters painted with arsenic-laced emerald green paint, which caused diabetes and blindness. Then they heard NASA announce that arsenic-based life forms were discovered on Earth. But how could something that kills actually help produce life? Now, in order for that to exist, we, life for it to exist, we need six elements, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, carbon, phosphorus, and sulfur. Well, NASA scientists checked if any bacterium could ever live in an arsenic-flooded environment. So they went to Mono Lake, California, to see if anything could thrive there with a sulfurous, uh, with a sulfurous uh, salts and excesses of arsenic. So. NASA pulled phosphorus from that elemental sextet of life, and lo and behold, a minute species used arsenic instead of phosphorus there. And at Mono Lake, it thrived there quite nicely. <laughs> so I suppose NASA found even more bizarre life in California than we're used to. <laughs> Darwinism may show that species can adapt, survive, because who knows, arsenic in place of phosphorus on Earth may date back to the origin of life where it may have occurred in arsenic-rich hydrothermal vents. I don't know if we want to create arsenic life forms here on Earth, but, but knowing this is possible increases the possibility of finding life elsewhere in the universe. And it's nice to know that we're looking at all possibilities when looking for what is ultimately good to find life in this universe. 
that was the end of arsenic poem for you guys. Yes, I'm giving you guys a science lesson. <laughs> and the last one I'm going to share with you is somebody put a in the lunchtime poll section a thing called Don't Read This Book About Banning Books. And because there was a little room at the end, I thought I would put in the 2016 edit of the poem The State of the Nation. So this is the last one for you guys. I wish I had a phone so I could display this. And by the way, I think Tom must have heard this because I believe I've used the phone as a prop with reading this in Austin before, but here we go. This is the State of the Nation 2016. My phone rang earlier today and I picked it up and I said, hello. And the man at the other end said, is this Jana Kuypers? And I said, yes, this is. May I ask who's calling? And he said, yeah, hi, this is George Washington. And I'm just sitting here with Jefferson and a couple other guys here. And we just want to tell you a few things. And I said, why me? And he said, excuse me. I believe I said I was the one that was going to be doing the talking. God, that's a problem with Americans nowadays. They're so damn rude. And I said, you know, you really didn't have to use language like that. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been dead for so long that I lose all control of my manners. <laughs> well, anyway, we just wanted to tell you some stuff. Now, I know... You know that we didn't really have much of an idea of what we were doing when we were starting this country here. We didn't have much experience in creating bodies of power. So I can understand how our constitution could be misconstrued. And then he put in a dramatic pause and he said, but when we said that people had a right to bear arms, we meant to protect themselves from a government gone wrong, and not so that you could kill a 16-year-old girl at an ATM at 6 p.m. for $20 cash. And when we said freedom of religion, we included the notion, the idea of the separation of church and state, because freedom of religion could mean freedom from religion. And when we said freedom of speech, we had no idea you'd be burning a flag, or painting pictures of Christ doused in urine, or, or photographing people with whips up their respective anatomies. But hell, I guess we've got to grin and bear it, because if we ban that, the next thing they'll ban is books, and we can't have that. And I said, but there are schools that have books banned, George. And he said, oh. <laughs> I'm seeing the smiling reactions for you guys there. So that one, and that's in the absolute end of the book for there. But thank you very much for listening, you guys. You're double plus awesome on the live feed as well. As I said, we this is a uh, live round robin poetry reading, and anybody is welcome to come. The first person that is up on the list is, as always, the lovely and charming Zoom host John F. McMillan, and following him will be Generalissimo himself, Brian Franco. So if you are ready, John, the stage is yours, and you can take it away.